Now once you understand how you can validate these input text boxes, let's take a look at how you can create a MongoDB database and connect that with your Next.js project. But before we connect the MongoDB database to this application, let me tweak this application a little bit. So instead of these error messages, I'm going to specify red border to these text boxes whenever there is an error inside this input. So instead of this formic, I'm going to add border color when there is an error inside this input text box. So to this div, I'm going to specify this condition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this style input group. Here I'm going to pass template string and then I'm going to pass dollar and curly braces. Inside this, I'm going to print the default styling and then I'm going to say here dollar curly braces and here I'm going to call this condition which is formic error password and formic touch password. Copy this and specify that here. So if we have true inside this condition, then I'm going to return border rows 600. And if this condition return false, then I'm going to return nothing. Now, let me just comment this statement. If you want, you can use this statement in your application. That's upon you. Let me save these changes. And now you can see I don't have error message to this password. Instead, I'm just going to get this red border to this input text box. Let me do the same for this email. Let me comment this, copy this condition. At the top, here I'm going to specify template string, something like this. Call here dollar curly braces and call dollar curly braces again. And here I'm going to specify that condition, copy this input style group and then specify that right here. And just after that, after this condition, here I'm going to say if this condition is true, then return border rows 600 otherwise return nothing save this file back to the project reload it and now if i have error inside this input text boxes i'm going to get this red border instead of the text messages now just after that let me create mongodb database and connect that with this application so i'm going to back to cloud mongodb.com and create a new project you can see i already have here a project called auth if you want to create a new project, you can click on this new project button and create your new project. I already have one. So I'm going to select this auth project. Inside this, I don't have any database. So let's create a new database here. So to create a database, you have to click on this build a database button. When you click on this button, you'll have these options. Choose the free option and create a share cloud database. Just after that, I'm going to leave everything as it is. Scroll down and change this cluster name. This became auth cluster. And I'm going to click on this create cluster button. Now, once you've done that, I'm going to leave everything as it is and click on this finish and close. It will take about three to four minutes to create your cloud database. So let me click on database access. And here I already have a new user. If you want to create a new user, you can click on this add new database user. This is going to create a new user for your database. Just for that, I'm going to click on this network access and include my current IP address by clicking on this add IP address button. When I click on this button from this window, you can add your current IP address so you can access your database. Now, once the auth cluster is successfully created, you can connect this with your Next.js application. So to connect this, you can click on this connect button. And from here, you can connect your application with the Next.js. So let me copy this link, close this, back to the project, open the terminal of the development server, clear the screen. And here I'm going to say npm install hyphen d. Mongoose. I'm going to install Mongoose module inside this project. So using this Mongoose, we can connect the Mongo to database. So let me just start the development server again. And I'm going to create a new file inside this project. And now let me create a new folder here for the connection. So let me create a folder with the name database. And inside this, I'm going to have a file called pawn.js. Inside this file, we need to first import Mongoose from Mongoose. Then you need to say here constant connect mongo is equal to async function i'm going to return the async function here something like this and then i'm going to call here try and catch block inside the catch block i'm simply going to return promise dot reject which is going to be the error value and inside this try block i'm going to say constant in the object i'm going to say connection is equal to await and then call mongoose dot connect and inside this mongoose.connect, I'm going to specify my MongoDB URL. So I'm going to first open the .env.local file. And right here, I'm going to create mongo URL is equal to. And then I'm going to paste my URL here. And then what I want, just out of this mongo URL, let me get rid of this password. And here I'm going to say here, admin123. 
and then i'm gonna save these changes back to the connection and inside this connect right here i'm gonna say process dot env dot mongo url like this so this is going to create a new connection just out of that once we have the connection i can say here if connection dot ready state if it is equal to one then return promise dot result and this is going to be the true value ready state property is going to return three values zero for disconnected one for connected two for connecting and three for disconnecting so if we have successful connection this ready state property is going to return one and when this condition return true i'm going to return promise with resolve true and at the end right down here i need to say export default connect mongo this function so for that once you have the successful connection you can create a schema for the user so the user can specify their username email and password so just click on the sign up and for this registration we are going to create a new schema and create a new endpoint for the registration 